As a young girl, one of the special gifts that Luna says she was given by God and the angels was a vision of the man that she would marry and a preview of the life that they would have together. That's, that's right. I was only about 10 years of age and I went, um, I was off fishing with my dad, which my dad took me a lot fishing with him. And I just said to him, can I go on up the river? Because the angels had said I had a, a special angel for me to meet. And my dad said, off you go. So off I went. And, you know, at one stage along the bank, I was told to stop. And I stopped and you know, I was looking around. Well, I don't see any special angel. And then the next minute, this beautiful angel just walked across the water. He was, he is magnificent. He hasn't changed. All that I can say is he's dressed in all of the amber colors you could ever think of. And the way his clothing is, it's like as if it's wrapped around him. You know, I, I can't describe that, but very, very beautiful. But all angels are beautiful. And the first thing a 10 year old child would say, can I not do that? Can I not walk across the water? And he just took my hand and said, no, you know, and we sat down and he was so big and I was so small and we sat on a tuft of grass. I don't know how we managed to do that now that I even think of it. And he said he had something important to tell me. And he told me his name was Angel Elijah. And it was like as if a big screen came across the water. It's hard to describe it. You couldn't describe it as glass or water or, or a curtain, but you just could see this big screen. And um, he just said, you know, I'm going to show you the man you're going to marry. And I see this young man and I was only 10. Like, you know, I'm going to fall in love. You know, he says, you're going to fall in love with them. I wasn't even thinking of those things, you know, and I could see him walking and, and there was trees each side of him. And he was on, you know, to me, it looked like at that time, you know, you could see leaves on the ground. And, you know, I giggled at the idea. You know, I'd fall in love with them because I was only 10. And he said we would marry and have children and we'd have ups and downs. And then at the end, he told me the part I got cross with in one sense as a child, a little annoyed with him. He said he was going to, we weren't going to grow old together. He was going to get sick. It was like my hand and his and his hand was huge. And I looking at him and kind of looking like this and I, I say to him, why did you have to tell me that? You know, and I, I turned away from him and then looked back mm -hmm. at the screen. And um, he just put his hand on my head and he said, I will put it to the back of your mind. But I never forgot. He put it to the back of my mind, but I never forgot. It was always, always there and the day when I was 19 or whatever age I was, um, and I saw Joe walking up the street, coming into the place where I was working the garage. Oh, I knew it was him. I recognized him so clearly, you know, and I always remember saying to the secretary there, because I was looking out the window, he's coming in for a job and I don't want him to get it. <laughs> I was rejecting him, but yet, so excited and I knew what was going to happen you know and of course he came in and he got the job and everything like that and he asked me out and we did marry and have children and I suppose from nearly the moment we married his health started to go down well everything he had he had said you know we had ups and downs in, in the sense of we were so poor and um, we grew vegetables, you know, grew a lot of the food ourselves. But yet I had the angels there. Many times I would have cried and give, given out. And just watching his health going down and what was happening to him um, and trying to help him to keep his dignity. Because at times he would, he always looked well. People would never have understood. And he was a man and he wanted to keep his dignity and he didn't want people to know, you know. So it was a battle that way, you know. But even with the children, you know, 
as they started to understand Dad doesn't be well physically, you know, if Dad went out into the garden at any stage or was out doing a job, they would actually be running in and out, keeping an eye on him and helping him because they knew something could happen. You know, and of course they had that experience of many things happening many times, you know. But the important thing was, you know, I could never say to him, I know you're only going to be here for so long because when he was well, you want someone to live their life and that is the most important thing. You don't go up and tell someone, by the way, what's happening to you is going to kill you, you're going to die, you know, because then a person can stop living life. And I never wanted that and I would never do that to any human being at all. And that's an important thing to remember. And he did live his life. He did have great times and I know he had times that were really, really hard. And I know even for the children at times were really, really hard. Faced with such acute poverty and the illness of her husband Joe, I asked Lorna if she was ever upset with the angels for not helping her more. No, well, well, they did help me in, in loads of ways. Um, why would God treat me any different than anyone else? You know, um, I wouldn't expect him to be. I'm a human being as well. You know, I'm flesh and blood and I'm very conscious that I have a soul and my guardian angel because I see all of the time. Um, I wouldn't ask God to treat me different. I wouldn't say to God, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't, if I had did that, maybe, you know, the Archangel Michael mightn't have come into my life then. You know, all of the other angels, all those messages. So I had to live, you have to live your human life too. You know, that, that's, that's important.